2019, so for the spring 2019 Virginia SOL, we are permitted to use our handheld calculators, but there will be another um, calculator inside the SOL software, and that's the Desmos Graphing Calculator. And it's an awesome calculator, and I just wanted to put a few tips and things we can do with it so you are at least a little bit familiar with it before you see it on the test. Now you can actually practice this before the SOL exam. So if you go into our LCPS Go um, area and click on the math, at least I think that is where it is for you. For me, it's in the math section. And I'm going to click right here on Desmos Graphing Calculator. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's a graphing calculator. Now if you look up here, it says Desmos Virginia standards of learning version. So we have a slightly modified version. And um, over here I went and I found um, something that Virginia put out to show us what is a little bit different about this calculator that you're going to use on the um, SOL exam versus the standard Desmos calculator. So um, things like being able to save graphs and things that you create have been disabled, which I guess makes sense. The angle mode, which is for us in a geometry class, kind of nice that the default mode will be degrees and not radians. As you recall, the handheld calculator, the TI-84 that we use, the default mode is radians and you have to remember to change it. So uh, we'll look at where this is set, but it's, it's degrees. This one says converting decimal answers to fractions is disabled. This is a little feature we use a lot in our handout calculator. Fortunately for 2019, you will still have that calculator. So if you need to do that, use your, um, use your handheld calculator. Uh, the advanced trig functions, fortunately for us, it doesn't really matter. All these other things are not things we're using. We're just using standard sine, cosine, tangent, and their inverses. So those are available to us. We're not worrying about stats or distribution. So um, for us, we're kind of okay. Um, it also uh, shows links here, and I will actually provide a link for this actual uh, page that I'm looking at uh, in the description so that if you want to download the apps on your phone, um, and obviously, of course, get parental permission before you download anything onto your phone. But if you click here, you can get an iOS um, version. And if you click here, you can get the Android version. I did download the iOS version to my phone and it seems to work fine. I'm running iOS 12, no worries. Uh, I cannot give you first-hand knowledge of the Android app, but presumably it's okay. And it's nice because you can practice in there. But anyway, I will give you uh, a link to this so that you can look at that more closely if you wish. So let's go back here. So uh, it really is designed to be a graphing calculator. So I can type in a graph, y equals x plus 1. And I can see what that graph is. Now there are options here. Um, that's the little gears. So if I want to see this in table form, I can do that and turn it into table form, which depending on what you're doing could be nice. Uh, for us, we probably don't care so much uh, for that. And um, if you're done with a particular kind of graphing exercise, you can just delete them and they go away. Uh, you can have more than one graph at a time. You can say, well, well, what do I know about y equals x plus 1 and x plus 3? So it, it automatically gives you different colors, and um, you can show it or hide it. That's what I'm clicking over here on the left can do for you. There are ways, I think, to change the colors, and I can't remember how. Maybe it's over here. Yeah, so you go into that gear. Maybe I want that one to be purple, so you can do that if you want. Um, and they're parallel, so they're not going to intersect. Now, if I change this one to be, say, negative x, uh, I can actually get to that point of intersection. So if that's something you need, you can do it. And again, for our purposes, probably not. We actually don't do a lot of graphing in geometry class, with an exception. So I'm going to click on my gears, and I'm going to delete everything I did to kind of start fresh. And I want to show you that you can actually graph circles on this thing. So uh, x minus 1. And I am typing on my keyboard right now. That's what this is coming from. Now, when I want to raise to a power using the keyboard, uh, my 6 key above it, there's a caret. Uh, it looks like an upside down V. So if I press that, it's going to shift up, and I can put my square there. And then I'm going to my arrow keys. I'm pressing the, the right arrow to kind of be down back away from the superscript. Now you can do all that on your keyboard. You can also do it um, using that. So I click down here where it shows a little picture of a keypad. So hide it, obviously put it away, or you can show it. So I can type everything here as well. So plus, um, I'm going to use a parenthesis, the other part of my circle. Now I want to say Y. 
So over here where it says ABC, you're going to click on that. And here is Y. Now I want to go back to my number setting. So uh, I can type in the rest of what this looks like. Now if I don't want to use my own keyboard, this is where the square is over here where it has an A um, squared. So I can just press that and it's going to equal for my circle equation 25. I'm going to hide my keypad here. So there it is. There's my circle. Now if it's a little low like it's going off the screen, I'm just moving the arrow and I'm pressing and kind of dragging so I can see it a little bit better. So that's nice. You can see what you got here. Now if you were kind of interested in what the center of the circle is, uh, if you ever forget the formula, like, gee, I can't remember what the formula is, looking at the graph, so if you thought it was negative 1, uh, positive 3, you can actually graph that point. So I'm going to add what's called an f of x expression, a function expression right here. But I can just put in an ordered pair. So maybe I forgot how this worked. And I type in negative 1, 3. It puts that point on the graph. And I can say, oh, that's not the center. That's not it. Um, and then I crawl. Oh, that's right. It's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. It's, it's, I have it opposite. So I can actually, if I want, I don't have to, but I could. And say, okay, that looks right. And now I think I know what the center is. So you can use this to kind of confirm. I don't know if you can move these. Oh, you can. Okay, great. So I want to keep, just for my purposes, you don't have to do this, but I like seeing my function up on top. Uh, a question you often get about circles is uh, what point is on a circle? So they may give you a list of, well, if it's multiple choice, they'll give you maybe four choices and you have to pick the one that's on the circle. That also may be one of those questions where there's multiple correct answers. Choose all that are on the circle. So this can be helpful for those kinds of questions. First of all, I can see. And if I click on the circle, like I can see what the coordinates are and I'm holding and dragging. And so I can sort of see where what they call the integral coordinates are, which means the, the x's and y's are integers. And so that can be like a helpful thing if you're trying to pick one out. The other thing you can do is um, I'm going to add again another what it's called f of x expression. And I'm going to say x equals uh, 1. Maybe I had a choice. Um, in my multiple choice, I'm going to add another one, where x was 1 and y is 4. So I put that on there, and then it shows me those two lines, x equals 1 and y equals 4, and see, I can see that intersection. That's not on the circle. Maybe there was another choice, 4 comma 1. So I'm going to make the x 4 and this one 1, and I can see it's on the circle. So I can do it that way, or I could have done what I had done here and say, well, is 4 1 on the circle? I can just type it in and look, 4, 1, oh yeah, there it is. And I would even probably just click on it to make sure, yeah, I'm on the circle. So it's a, an, another way if you're trying to figure out you have a question, is a point on a circle? So I think that could be a really helpful thing uh, to use the Desmos calculator for that your TI-84 calculator is less helpful with because you can only graph functions and this is letting us graph something that isn't a function. Okay, suppose we want to solve a problem like this. We have a right triangle, and the acute angle measures 20 degrees. We know the hypotenuse is 22 centimeters, and we want to find x. So we're going to use trig. The sine of 20 is x over 22. Multiply both sides by 22 to get that the x that we want is 22 times the sine of 20. Well, let's use the Desmos calculator to figure that out. So I'm going to bring up the... Uh, keypad on the lower left corner here. So first you have to know how to find our trig functions. So we have a little button here called functions and you click on that and we got sine, cosine, tangent and their inverses. We're going to type in 22 times the sine of 20 degrees. Now we saw that it's defaulting right to 20 degrees. So if you look over here where it, it already says the equals, you don't have to press the equal button we can see just looking at this box that the answer is approximately 7.52 and of course they extend the decimals out pretty far. Now if you're not sure 100% am I really in degrees or radians, let me show you how you can check. So if you go to the right of where the uh, display is, the graph, you click on the wrench and that's the settings. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here, projector mode and that's if you're going to be displaying this on a board or something. But if you look on the bottom, it's got radians and degrees. So the thing that's that dark green, degrees, 
and I'm clicking on it now with my mouse. So that's what it looks like when it's selected. If you needed radians, you would click here, but we don't want radians, we want degrees. And you can actually see when I change it to radians, how it changes the answer and we want it on degrees. So you shouldn't have to do anything, but that's how you would check. If you just wanna be sure, here's what I tend to do. I know that the sine of 30 degrees is a half. So I'm just gonna type in the sine of 30 as just a test that I'm in the right spot. And it is sine of 30 is a half. If you don't remember that, that's fine. You don't have to do this. But for me, it's just a little sanity check that I'm in degree mode and I have the right answer. I'm gonna use the Desmos calculator to help me using problems that require formulas, such as this one. I've got a rectangular prism and I wanna find its surface area using these dimensions. Surface area is HP plus two uppercase B. Now the height of this prism is 10, that's the distance between the bases. The perimeter, P, is the perimeter of the base. So two times three plus two times four, 14. And uppercase B is area of the base, so three times four is 12. I'm gonna take these values, plug them into the surface area equation, and it comes out with 164 square centimeters. Let's look at our Desmos calculator to see how we could use that to help us. Now you can use it like a straight calculator and, and type all those things in like you would on your handheld, or you can try this. So I'm actually gonna type in that formula for the um, surface area of a rectangular prism, or actually any prism. Um, and so if you'll notice here, it says add slider H, P, and B, and I'm gonna say I want sliders for all of them. And so you can sit and play with these values. I'm actually gonna make them constants. So let's see if we can remember what those values were. The height of the prism, the distance between those bases was 10. I'm gonna type that in. Uh, the perimeter of the base. So as I recall, um, it was a four by three rectangle. So perimeter is two times length times two times width. So I'm gonna just type in two times three plus uh, two times four. And so I'm gonna let the calculator actually do that calculation. It's telling me that perimeter is 14. And then the uppercase B is the area of the base. Since it's a rectangle, it's length times width, which is three times four, which is 12. And then if you look up at the original formula that we had there, the S equals HP plus 2B, it put it together for us. So what's nice about being able to do this in the Desmos calculator is that you don't have to worry about some of the problems we've seen with that handheld calculator, where if you don't type in the order of operations correctly or you make a mistake with numbers, like it does that step for you. So there's a big advantage to kind of uh, using the Desmos calculator for formulas, if especially if that's been um, a problem area, you know, having some problems getting those formulas to work correctly. Um, anyway, that is just the, and I'm gonna clear this out here, that is our Desmos calculator. I am not an expert on the Desmos calculator. I'm kind of learning it along with you. These are some of the things I've discovered that could be helpful. Look at this Desmos calculator, practice some things with it, maybe practice some of the things I've shown here. See what you can discover. Maybe you can come up with some other shortcuts or helpful hints and maybe share that with the rest of the uh, class and, and we'll, we'll have this extra tool that can help us along with this exam. Thank you so much for watching.